All right, I'm gonna to try to do just a quick example solve of a four x four using my method. First, I solve my white center by joining two center pieces to form a bar. Then I form another bar, join these two bars. I put my white solve center on the bottom and I look for yellow center pieces. Here I've got a bar, so I've gotta move it to the top without messing this up. So I move that, slice that bar up, move it over, and then when I slice back, that restores my white center. So now I'm looking for two more yellows to form a bar. So they're here and here. So that's a bar there. Now in order to solve my yellow center, I have to do that without messing up my white center that I just solved. And the way to do that is put both bars in the same slice, move that over, and then when I slice back, restoring that, it builds this. Now I solve mine in bogger color order, so I'll start with blue, orange, then green, red. So I'm looking for two blues, so I see those don't match, so if I move that, that forms a bar. Now I'm looking for two more blues. These match. Now I have another bar, and I join these two bars. As I solve these middle colors, I put yellow on the right and white on the left. Next, I want um, orange, so bogger, blue, orange. So I have an orange bar right there. I'm gonna bring it down and move it, move it over. Now I just wanna join two more oranges to form a bar. Now I have to make sure not to mess up this blue center I just formed. So again, if I just join those, I mess up my blue center. So what I have to do is put them in the same slice and then I wanna bring this down, move it over and then slice back up. And now we're down to our last two centers, which solve simultaneously. Again, we just wanna form bars. So I've already got bars here. So I wanna notice these and see what I can do to, to form a bar here. And if I do that, I just form bars. There's five possible cases. We go over that in the tutorial, but they all solve the same principle of forming bars. So now I've gotta remember bogger, blue, orange, green, red. So I want this green, I want this red. That means I need to bring this green down, move it over, and then when I slice back, it solves both those simultaneously. If I accidentally, if I accidentally swap two colors, that's easy. So for example, this is supposed to be green, that's supposed to be red. Just move a bar up and over, bring that back, now move this other bar up and over. And now just put yellow on top, white on bottom, and double check. Bogger, blue, orange, green, red. So that's correct. Now what I want to do is start pairing these edge pieces together like this one. So I got lucky in that one solved. So is that one. But I want to pair them together. But I'm going to start with my white, then do yellow, then do the middle colors. If I happen to see one solved, I'll preserve it and just store it on the top for now. But yeah, I got real lucky. I've got uh, two. So in any event, um, I start with white. So I'm looking for uh, Two, two matching whites. So here I have two right here. And then what I wanna do is pair those up. The way I do that is just split my centers, now they're paired. I put this on top, I'm gonna to store it up here, and then I move an unsolved edge pair into its place to bring back down. That way when I restore my centers, it doesn't mess up anything solved. Now I like to go ahead and store my whites on the bottom, so I'll spin that down and it's stored down there. And now I'm looking for any two more uh, white edge pieces. So here's a green and, uh, and here's another green. So what I'll do is let me give you an example when they're facing each other. So here's two greens and they're facing each other. So we can resolve that a couple different ways. One is just to flip that. There's a lot of ways to flip, but this time I'm just going to take it out, put it back in, and then now I pair these up set it on top, put an unsolved pair in its location, bring that down, and then when I restore my centers, I've got that, that uh, piece I just made on top. So what I wanna do is spin it down to the bottom. I like to go ahead and match it with its center, but that's not necessary right now, and then spin it down. So I've got both those solved, and I had two lucky yellows. Uh, whoops, somehow I lost track of that and brought it down, I'm trying to show you some examples. Okay, so in any event, we're back, here's two more reds right here. So I'd split the centers to join those. I go to set it on top, I have to make certain to bring down an unsolved edge pair because when I fix my centers, it'll split that edge pair. 
Okay, so now I want to store this one on the bottom. It's just easier for me to track. There's more efficient ways to pair edges and store them, but as a beginner, this is the easiest way to keep track of your progress without getting lost. And then um, these, so I just brought that down from the top. So you do need to know how to uh, move pieces and, and bring them down and whatnot. So for example, if I want this down, I could just turn the side and that'll work and they'll pair. But I have to be mindful if I do that, anything here gets turned. And that's okay as long as you know that. But here's another way is just to bring an empty slot up and then return that, bring that down. Okay, so now I pair these, bring down and unpaired. Then when I fix my centers, um, that piece is right here. I match it, spin it down. Now I have all the whites uh, paired up and stored in the bottom. Currently they match the center colors, but they don't have to, and that may change as we pair other ones. So don't get hung up on that. I just want them on the bottom out of my way. Now I wanna do all my yellows and store them on the top so I can kind of keep better track of them. So I'm looking for any two yellows that match. So this red and that red match. So if I split my centers, they match right there. And then what I wanna do is set it on top, make sure I bring an unsolved edge pair down restore my centers i just got a lucky uh another lucky solve right there too so i just want to keep track of that and not mess that up so now i'm down to my last two uh yellows so now when i put those on top my unsolved edge pair got kicked to the side so i need to make sure to move that first set that on top then put an unsolved edge pair in that empty slot that i'm going to bring down and now i fix my center so all the yellows are in the top now they may be facing yellow up they may not that that's okay if they don't if they look like this i just want them in the top now i got lucky and actually have two solved edge pieces uh let me mix that up those um so i don't all right now what i want to do is i have um all my white solved all my yellow solved i want to start doing my last four middle colors so i'm looking for any two that match up so for example, these match, but I don't have anywhere to store it on top. So what I wanna do is take an unsolved edge pair, set it on top and bring down one of my yellows. That's gonna be easy for me to track now. And then I pair these up. I wanna put it up here and put these in its place. And then when I fix my centers, those are back fixed. The edge pair I just paired up stored in the top and now I'm down to three more. Let's see what else. So these two match up. These two match up, but again, I have nowhere to put it because these are all solved. So what I want to do is take this one that I'm not going to use, put it in the top, bring down a solved edge pair. Now when I join these, I have something to trade with. I just bring that down and I don't mind if I split that up because they're unsolved. So when I do that, now I actually got lucky and it solved my last two centers. Um, that'll happen. I've heard mathematically 33% of the time, but seems like 50% to me with my method, but maybe it's 33. I'll have to explore that. So sometimes you get lucky and everything's solved, but let me show you what happens when you don't get lucky. Just so you could see it better. I'll put the yellows on top. Um, I'll put the yellows on top and then I'll intentionally um, mix this up. Uh, okay, so now um, all my yellows are solved. All my whites are solved. These two are solved. I'm down to my last two edges. And I've got a full um, supplemental tutorial on this, but I'm down to my last two edges where they can pair up either way. The problem is I have nowhere to put them. Um, because everything solved. So that's that's one case where they're adjacent. Let me flip this and I'll show you the only other case with my method, which is when the uh, edge pieces are in the same plane. And we're just gonna use a trick we used earlier. We're going to split the centers and then flip these, which will put this up here and move it to where it needs to go. And same with this, it'll put it down here to pair with that one. So just so you see that when they're in the same plane, I just split them and flip them. I'm just gonna use a beginner method flip. There's a lot of, I teach more advanced methods, but just take it out, put it upside down. Now, when I come back, those pair up and that's how you solve your last two edges. It's a pretty easy concept. 
Again, I've got a full tutorial on that. And now we're reduced to a uh, three by three. So we solve our white cross just like a three by three. Mine's already solved. If it wasn't, I would go ahead and do so now. And then I just start in inserting, um, just inserting my corners and my edges, you know, so. For example, you know, you can do F2L or if you don't know F2L, just uh, put the corner in first if you don't know F2L. And then um, you can just put your corners in and then come back and grab your edge. Whatever method you like, there's a lot of different methods. Same thing, uh, oh, that one's, let me kick that out of there. That edge needs to go over here. Grab that and so in order to do this method, you have to know how to solve a three by three. I should have made that clear. So now we've run into our first parity. So we've got all of this solved. So that'd be F2L on a three by three. And the problem is now we need to get a line or 12 nine here. And as you can see, we can't. So this is impossible on a three by three and it's not parity. Now I teach an intuitive method how to do this in my supplemental, but I'm just gonna use the algorithm right now. There's a lot of different algorithms, but I, this is the only one I know, and it works on four by four and five by five. That flips it. The intuitive method is really easy. And again, I have a full tutorial on that if you're interested in it. So now I just wanna solve, um, I wanna get all my yellows on top. That's the method I use. Now I, I solve corners first. Some people solve edges first. Uh, this is for look OLL, which is just like an intermediate method. And then whether you recognize it or not, this is an unsolvable case. This is another parody. So let me, let me do something to make it more noticeable for you by shuffling. Now you notice a little easier that this is a parody. Okay. So let me, I'm going to move, I'm going to shuffle this here, that there and show you what else this parody looks like. Okay. So same parody, they're wrong across from each other. You can solve every iteration of that parody with this one algorithm though. That one algorithm will solve every iteration. So I'll show you, for example, if we have another one and there's an intuitive way to solve this I teach as well. So if we had this, so if we had this example, just do that same parody. It doesn't matter which way you hold it. Oh, I'm sorry, do the same parody algorithm and it doesn't matter which way you hold it. Just do the alg, and then what happens is you end up with a standard three by three case that's solvable. So for example, I know this needs to go here, this here, and that there. So now we're reduced down to a standard case. And um, if you have any sh trouble with that, watch my full tutorial, watch the supplemental tutorials. I just wanted to try to do a quick um, example solve that was less than four hours like my tutorials are.